The Hound of the Basker Wills. Reading Buzz. I sat up with Sir Henry until nearly three o'clock in the morning, but no sound of any sort did we hear except the chiming clock upon the stairs. It was the most melancholy vigil, and ended by each of us falling asleep in our chairs. Fortunately, we were not discouraged and were determined to try again. The next night, we lowered the lamp and sat without making the least sound. It was incredible how slowly the hours crawled by, and yet we were helped through it by the same sort of patient interest which the hunter must feel as he watches the trap into which he hopes the game may wander. One struck, and two, and we had almost for the second time given it up in despair. When in an instant we both sat bolt upright in our chairs, with all our weary senses keenly on the alert, we had heard the creak of a step in the passage. Very stealthily, we heard it pass along until it died away in the distance. Then the baronet gently opened his door, and we set out in pursuit. Already, our man had gone round the gallery, and the corridor was all in darkness. Softly, we stole along until we had come into the other wing. We were just in time to catch a glimpse of the tall, black-bearded figure. His shoulders rounded as he tiptoed down the passage. Then he passed through the same door as before, and the light of the candle framed it in the darkness and shot one single yellow beam across the gloom of the corridor. We shuffled cautiously towards it, trying every plank before we dared to put our whole weight upon it. We had taken the precaution of leaving our boots behind us, but. The old board snapped and creaked beneath our tread. Sometimes it seemed impossible that we should fail to hear our approach. However, the man was entirely preoccupied in that which he was doing. When at last we reached the door and peeped through, we found him crouching at the window, candle in hand, his white, intent face pressed against the pane, exactly as I had seen him two nights before. We had arranged no plan of campaign. But the baronet is a man to whom the most direct way is always the most natural. He walked into the room, and as he did so, Barry Moore sprang up from the window with a sharp hiss of his breath and stood livid and trembling before us. What are you doing here, Barry Moore? Nothing, sir. His agitation was so great that he could hardly speak. It was the window, sir. I go round at night to see that they are fastened. On the second floor? Yes, sir. All the windows. Look here, Barrymore," said Sir Henry sternly. "We have made up our minds to have the truth out of you, so it will save you the trouble to tell it later." The fellow looked at us in a helpless way, and he wrung his hands together like one who is in the last extremity of doubt and misery. I, I was doing no harm, sir. I was holding a candle to the window. And why were you holding a candle to the window? Don't ask me, Sir Henry. Don't ask me. I give you my word, sir. That it is not my secret, and that I cannot tell it. A sudden idea occurred to me, and I took the candle from the window sill where the butler had placed it. He must have been holding it as a signal. I said, "Let us see if there is any answer." I held it as he had done, and stared out into the darkness of the night. Vaguely, I could discern the black bank of the trees and the lighter expanse of the moor, for the moon was behind the clouds. And then I gave a cry of exultation. For a tiny pinpoint of yellow light had suddenly transfixed the dark veil, and glowed steadily in the center of the black square, framed by the window. There it is! I cried. No, no, sir! It is nothing, nothing at all! Exclaimed the butler. Move your light across the window, Watson! Cried the baronet. See the other moves also. Now, you rascal! Do you deny that it is a signal? Come, speak up! Who is your confidant out yonder? And what is this conspiracy that is going on? The man's face became openly defiant. It's my business and not yours. I will not tell. Then you leave my employment right away. Very good, sir. If I must, I must. And you go in disgrace. Your family has lived with mine for over a hundred years under this roof, and here I find you deep in some dark plot against me. It was a woman's voice, and Mrs. Barrymore, paler and more horror-struck than her husband, was standing at the door. Her bulky figure in a shawl and skirt might have been comic, were it not for the intensity of feeling upon her face. We have to go, Eliza. This is the end of it. You can pack our things," said the butler.
Oh John, John, have I brought you this? It is my doing. Sir Henry, all mine. He has done nothing except for my sake and because I asked him. Speak out then. What does it mean? My unhappy brother is starving on the moor. We cannot let him perish at our very gates. The light is a signal to him that food is ready for him. And his light out yonder is to show the spot to which to bring it. Then your brother is the escaped convict, sir, said Barrymore. I said that it was not my secret and that I could not tell it to you. But now you have heard it and you will see that if there is a plot, it was not against you. Yes, sir. His name was Selden and he's my younger brother, spoke Mrs. Barrymore. We humored him too much when he was a lad and gave him his own way in everything until he came to think that the world was made for his pleasure and he could do what he liked in it. He knew that I was here and that we could not refuse to help him. When he dragged himself here one night, weary and starving with the warders hard at his heels, what could we do? We took him in and fed him and cared for him. Then you returned, sir, and my brother thought we would be safer on the moor than anywhere else. So he lay in hiding here. But every second night, we made sure if he was still there by putting a light in the window. And if there was an answer, my husband took out some bread and meat to him. That is the whole truth. When they were gone, we looked out of the window again. Sir Henry had flung it open. Far away in the black distance, there still glowed that one tiny point of yellow light.